Alright then gang, so far we've seen some of the basic built-in functionality in Dino and to do this we've not needed to import any kind of external modules. But Dino also provides us with what's known as the standard library and you can find it at this address right here which I'll leave down below in the description. Now the standard library is basically a collection of modules for commonly used tasks. And these modules are maintained by Dino themselves and not third parties. So you can always be sure that they're going to work with Dino and that they will be maintained. Now there's quite a lot of different modules in the standard library. We're going to take a look at a few, but it's also important to mention that not all of them are currently fully stable. And in order to work with some of them, we're going to have to explicitly use the unstable flag and we'll see that later on. First of all, let's try using this UUID module, which is a nice addition to Dino, and it allows us to generate unique IDs very easily. So then, to use this module, we need to do an import like this. And most of the time when you're using an import from one of these standard libraries, it's going to be the mod file that we import, but not always. So let us grab this right here. We're going to copy that. And by the way, if you click on most of these different packages right here, you're going to see examples of how to use that down here. So it's always good to have a read of those. But anyway, let's now go and paste this over here. And what we're doing is importing something from this file right here. And we're importing v4. So this is one of the versions to generate unique IDs. So now, if we run this file, it's going to download this package right here and it's going to cache it for our project. So it stores it away on our computer, but not inside a node modules folder over here. But that's all we need to do. Use an import statement like this. And now we can use this module in our code. So to generate something, a UID, all we need to do is say const and then we'll call this UID. You can call it what you want. It really doesn't matter. And then we'll use V4, which we just imported and a method on that called generate like so. And that's all there is to it. It generates us a unique UID and it's going to place that inside here. So let's log that to the console, console.log and UID. So now let's give this a whirl, save it and open up your terminal. Let me get rid of that junk from the last lesson. So clear. And now if I just make this a little smaller and then say Dino run sandbox.ts, press enter and we're going to see this unique ID right here. So that's what it's generated for us. And every time we run this, it's going to be different. So if I use the same command to run this again, we're going to see a different ID right here. Pretty awesome, right? All right then, so let's try using a different module, this time the FS1, which stands for file system. And this is going to give us a load of different methods that we can use to do different things with our file system, more than we can do out of the box. So if we click on that module and scroll down, it should show us how to use this, how to import it. And basically we're just importing things from this file right here. So let me just grab this, copy that, and I'm going to paste it right here. I'm going to delete these two things because I don't want those two things. And instead, I'm going to import two methods. One of them is called readJSON and the other one is called writeJSON. So these are two methods that we can use to either read a JSON file on our computer or write a JSON file. So let's use the first one, which is readJSON. Now to do that, we need a JSON file. So I'm going to just create a new file and call this ninjas.json press enter and I'm just going to paste in a load of JSON from my GitHub file over here. You can see it's just three objects. We have a name property on each, an age and a belt color. So that's the JSON, dead simple. And now I just want to read that file, that JSON from this file using this method right here, read JSON. So I'm going to say const JSON object, that's what I'm storing the result in, is equal to await because this read JSON method right here, that is asynchronous. So await read JSON and then inside we need to say what JSON file we want to read and it's ninjas.json and then we just want to log the result to the console. So console.log and it's going to be JSON obj. All right, dead simple, right? So let's give this a whirl. I'm going to say Dino run and then we need the allow hyphen read flag because we're reading files on our computer and then the name of this file which is sandbox.ts and we're still going to get an error and I'm going to show you what that means in a second 
But if I try to run this, we get all these errors. And that's because this package, this FS package at the minute is marked as unstable. So by default, it's not going to work. But if we still want to play around with it, we still want to use it. All we need to do is pass this the unstable flag. So I can say dash dash unstable like so. And now if I run this, it's going to work, hopefully. And we see the result right here. So we get that array of objects back. So that's a nice little method that we can use. All right, let's do something similar. This time we want to write JSON. So we need some data in this file in order to write that to a JSON file. So I'm just going to create an array of objects. So let's call this books and set it equal to an array. And instead of you watching me type out couple of objects. I'm going to paste these from my repo and you can see it's just a couple of objects with a title and an author. So I'm going to take that array and I want to write a JSON file based on that array and we're going to use this write JSON method to do it. Simple. So we say await and then write JSON and then over here we pass in the file we want to create. I'm going to call it books.json. You can call it what you want and the data we want to write to that file is this thing right here that's the second argument so we can pass in books like so now i'm going to just log under here console.log created books.json so that when this runs we know that this is finished so let me save this again and let me run this again and this time we also need allow write because we're trying to write a file right here so let me pass that flag right here, allow hyphen write and press enter. And hopefully in a second we see created books.json and we see that file right here. If we go in, we see all of that JSON, but it's not formatted very well. So what we could do is pass a third argument right here, which is an options object. And one of those is a spaces property and this allows us to format it a bit better and it's basically saying how many spaces do you want each indentation to be well i'm going to say two and press save and now if i try to run this again then we should see inside the books.json file it looks a bit nicer okay so that's pretty awesome there's two nice methods there to read JSON and write JSON. But remember, at the time of recording this, it's currently unstable, this module. So we have to use this unstable flag for this to work at the minute. OK, so next up, let's use the HTTP module to create a server in Dino. All right, so there's also a module in the Dino standard library for doing things like creating a server, and that's this module right here, HTTP. So if we click on that, it's going to show us down here how we can use this. And I'm just going to grab this top line over here to import it, and I'm going to paste this right over here. So we're importing this thing right here, serve, from this file over here. And this is actually a function, and when we invoke it, it creates a server for us. So let's try that. I'm going to say down here const serve is equal or rather we'll call this server is equal to serve and then we invoke this and then we pass in an object as an argument and the property inside this object we need to create for now is the port property and that's what port number we want to listen to so i'm just going to say 3000 so now if we were to run this it's going to create a server which is listening to port 3000 on local host so under here, I'm also going to log something to the console, console.log, and we'll just say listening for requests on port 3000, right? Dead simple. So if I now run this by opening up the terminal and saying dino run, and then we need to use the flag allow hyphen net because we're going to be using the network if we didn't do this and i'll demo that sandbox.ts we'll get an error so you see right here permission denied so we need to pass in that allow net flag so i'm going to do that right now dino run allow hyphen net and then sandbox.ts and now we can see we're listing for requests on port 3000 but if we go to port 3000 over here on localhost, then nothing actually loads. It's not working. And that's because we're not actually doing anything with any requests that come in. So it's not going to work yet. And we need to listen for those requests and then respond to them. 
So at the minute, this is all kind of very similar to how Node.js works. We create a server using a different kind of method, but then basically we're listening for requests. But the way that we listen for requests and then respond to them in Dino using this server is by using an asynchronous for in loop. And that is different to how we typically do it in Node. So let me write this out first of all, then I'm going to explain it. So I'm going to say for await and then in parentheses const request of server. And remember, that's this thing right here. And then inside this for loop, I'm going to say request and then use a method. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to console.log something for now to say request made, right? So what's happening here? What does this all mean? Well, the for await loop is basically an asynchronous loop and it allows us to iterate over an asynchronous iterable object. Now this server right here, that is an asynchronous iterable object, meaning that we can iterate over it like we could an array of items, but this time it's an asynchronous iterable object, meaning we don't have all the items ready to iterate over straight away. So once this loop is first registered, it essentially awaits request items to come into the server. And then whenever a new request comes in, we run the loop for that request and we get access to that request from that server. OK, so now if I save this and come back over here and refresh, if I go to the console over here, oops, my mistake, I need to run this first of all. So now let me press up and enter to run this file. Now we're listening for request on port 3000. If I now come to refresh over here, we should see request made, right? And if I stop and refresh again, we should see another request made. Now we don't just want to do this. We want to actually respond to the request and send something to the browser, right? So how do we do that? Well, we can say, request rec, which is this object right here. And this represents the request that comes in. And then we can use a method on that called respond. And that sends a response to the browser. Now inside here, I'm going to pass in an object and then I'm going to specify what the body of this response should be. And I'm just going to send back a string. Now I'm going to use a template string because in a minute I'm going to output a dynamic variable inside this, but I'll say hello ninjas and then save it for now. So if we now go over here, in fact, we need to cancel out of this process because we've made a change to this file. So let me cancel out of the process, run the file again. And now if we go over here and if we refresh, we already saw it, but if we refresh, now we're getting this response back from our server. So the request is coming in and it's handling that request by sending this response. And the body of that response is this string, which is coming back to the browser over here. Awesome. Now that we can get other information from this request object. So I could get, for example, the URL of the request. So what I'm going to do is say const URL is equal to request dot. And then you see we have these different properties right here that we have access to. I'm going to grab the URL. So whatever we visit up here, if it was forward slash about, then the URL would be forward slash about. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to output this URL inside this template string. So I'm going to say you visited. And then the way we output a variable inside a template string is the dollar sign curly braces, then the name of the variable. So URL in our case, save that and come over here, refresh. And oops, we can't do that because again, we need to <laughs> restart the server. I often forget that. So we need to say Dino run allow net sandbox.ts then come over here and refresh and you can see hello ninjas you visited just forward slash which is the root of the address but if we go to for example forward slash about then we can see forward slash about and this is going to be the same for whatever url that we go to forward slash about us and we can see forward slash about us right here so then you could if you wanted to evaluate this url on every request that comes in and then we could send a different response back to the browser for each different URL that is requested. And you could use this approach to set up some kind of API. But there's also third party packages to help us create Dino APIs and websites too. So I'm going to be showing you how to use one of those in probably a couple of tutorials time. But first of all, let's learn about how to use third party packages in general with Dino in the next video.